This diary was commenced for the fun of writing down my experience as a soldier from the Old Norse State. I never thought for a moment that I would put it in print, but now that I'm getting old and have read so many histories written by our officers, I have never seen in print a history written by a private. I know that my diary is truly the life of a man behind the gun, therefore I make bold to publish it. I am sure my experience was that of other privates, and a true history of my companies and regiments, as well as the brigade, division, and even corps that I belong to. I am certain that the men of 61 to 65 who read this will recall most vividly the camping, marching, fighting, and suffering they endured in those never-to-be-forgotten days of long ago. And to the younger generation of Southern-born, it will show how we endured and suffered, but still fought on for the cause we know was right. Chapter 1. The Beginning. April 25, 1861. I belong to the Charlotte Grays, Company C, 1st North Carolina Regiment. We left home for Raleigh. Our company is commanded by Captain Egbert Ross. We are all boys between the ages of 18 and 21. We offered our services to Governor Ellis, but were afraid he would not take us, as we are so young. But before we were called out, our company was ordered to go to the United States Mint in our town and take same. We marched down to it, and it was surrendered to us. We guarded it several days, when we were ordered to Raleigh, and left on the above date. Our trip was full of joy and pleasure, for at every station where our train stopped, the ladies showered us with flowers and Godspeed. We marched to the fairgrounds. The streets were lined with people, cheering us. When we got there, our company was given quarters, and lo and behold, horse stables, with straw for bedding, is what we got. I know we all thought it a disgrace for us to sleep in such places with our fine uniforms. Not even a washstand or any place to hang our clothes on. They didn't even give us a looking glass. Our company was put in the 1st North Carolina Regiment, commanded by Colonel D.H. Hill, Lieutenant Colonel C.C. Hill, and Major James H. Lane. We enlisted for six months. Our state went out of the Union on May 20th and we were sent to Richmond, Virginia, on the 21st. Stayed there several days when we were ordered to Yorktown, Virginia. Here they gave us tents to sleep in. This looked more like soldiering, but we would have liked to have had some of that straw in Raleigh. The day after we got here, our company was sent out with spades and shovels to make breastworks. And to think of the indignity, we were expected to do the digging. Why, of course, I never thought that this was work for soldiers to do but we had to do it. Gee, what hands I had after a few days' work. I know I never had a pick or shovel in my hand to work with in my life. A few days after that, a squad of us were sent out to cut down trees, and by George, they gave me an axe and told me to go to work. Well, I cut all over my tree until the lieutenant commanding, seeing how nice I was marking it, asked me what I had done before I became a soldier. I told him I was a clerk in a dry goods store. He said he thought so from the way I was cutting timber. He relieved me. But what insults are put on us who came to fight the Yankees? Why, he gave me two buckets and told me to carry water to the men that could cut. We changed camp several times until about the 3rd of June, when we marched 15 miles and halted at Bethel Church, and again commenced making breastworks. Our rations did not suit us. We wanted a change of diet, but there were strict orders from Colonel D.H. Hill that we should not go out foraging. Well, Bill Stone, Allie Todd, and myself put on our knapsacks and went to the creek to wash our clothes. But when we got there, we forgot to wash. We took a good long walk away from the camp and saw several shoats. We ran one down, held it so it could not squeal, then killed it, cut it into small pieces, put it in our knapsacks, returned to the creek, and from there to camp where we shared it with the boys. It tasted good. Our comrade Earnhardt did not fare so well. He went to a place where he knew he could get some honey. Well, he got it all right, but he got the bees also. His face and hands were a sight when he got the beehive to camp. June 10th, at three o'clock this morning, the long roll woke us up. We fell in line, marched about five miles, then countermarched as the Yankees were advancing on us. We got to our breastworks a short time before the Yankees came, and firing commenced. We gave them a good reception with shot and shell. 
The fight lasted about four hours. Our company was behind the works that held the line where the major of the Yankee regiment, Winthrop, was killed. After he fell, our company was ordered to the church, but was soon sent back to its former position. This is the first land battle of the war, and we certainly gave them a good beating. But we lost one of our regiment, Henry Wyatt, who was killed while gallantly doing a volunteer duty. Seven of our men were wounded. The Yankees must have lost at least 200 men in killed and wounded. It was their boast that they could whip us with corn stalks, but to their sorrow they found that we could do some fighting too. After the fight, some of the boys and myself went over the battlefield, and we saw several of the Yankee dead, the first I had ever seen. And it made me shudder. I am now in a school where sights like this should not worry me long. Our commander in this fight was Colonel Bankhead, Magruder. The Yankee commander was General B.F. Butler. From now on, I will never again grumble about digging breastworks. If it had not been for them, many of us would not be here now. We returned the same night to Yorktown, full of glory. On July 18th, we heard that our boys had again whipped the Yankees at Bull Run. Also on July 21st, again at Manassas. We changed camp a number of times, made fortifications all around Yorktown, and when our six months were over, we were disbanded and returned home. So my experience as a soldier was over. I stayed home five months, when I again took arms for the Old North State and joined a company raised by Captain Harvey White of Charlotte, and left our home on April 23, 1862 at 6.30 p.m. I stayed in Salisbury until next night, when I, with several others, took the train for Raleigh, where our company was. We went to the insane asylum to see Langfried, who wanted to go home by telegraph to see his cotton and tobacco. After spending most of our day in town, we went to camp four miles from Raleigh. We stopped the carriage, and the driver said he would take us to camp for three dollars. We halved it with him, and he drove us there. We reported to Captain White, and he showed us to our hut. We were surprised to find it without a floor, roof half off, and wholly all over. We commenced repairing, and went to the woods to chop a pole for a part of the bedstead. We walked about a mile before we found one to suit us. It was a hard job to get it to our hut. We put it up and put boards across, and then put our bedding on it, which consisted of leaves we gathered in the woods, and now it is a fit bed for a king or a Confederate soldier. It commenced raining at dark, which compelled us to cover with our oilcloth coats. We did not get wet, but passed a bad night, as I had gotten used to a civilian's life again. May 31st. Up to date, nothing transpired worth relating, but this morning got orders to leave. Left at 6 a.m., our company got passenger cars, and the balance of our regiment had to take box cars. June 1st. Arrived at Weldon, North Carolina at 7 o'clock. We set up our tents at Garrisburg, a short march from Weldon. Our company is close to the railroad track. We collected broom straw and made a bed down of it. June 2nd. We received some visitors from home. June 3rd, raining all day, but have a good time with the ladies in this neighborhood. They treated my comrade and myself only as southern ladies know how to treat their soldiers, with respect and something good to eat. June 4th, still raining, and the roads are very muddy. June 5th, we were marched to town and received our arms, Springfield muskets. Next day went off very quietly. June 7th, at 11 o'clock tonight, we were roused out of our sleep and marched to Weldon Bridge, as the river was so swift that it was thought the bridge would wash away. We went there to knock the sides off, so that the water could run over it. But we got there without tools. When they came, the water was receding, so we returned to camp. June 8th. I am very tired from our first night's march. June 20th. Up until this date, there has been nothing worth recording. But today got orders to fall in line with two days' rations cooked, left at 12 midnight, in boxcars. We knocked holes in them to get fresh air. We laid over six hours, eight miles from Garrisburg in order to let the passenger cars pass us. Several of our company left the train in quest of supper. We found a house where a lady promised to give us supper for 50 cents each. As we were doing full justice to her supper, the train started. We left in a hurry. 
and did not have time to pay for our meal. I don't suppose she gave us her blessing. June 21st. We reached Petersburg, Virginia this morning at half past two, and had barely laid down with a brick wall for my pillow when breakfast was announced in the shape of Max Sample, who told us where we could get it. I ran the blockade with cats and went to see Mike Ellinger. He was not at home. Afterward, we met Wertheim, and we all went again and got something good to eat. We then returned to our regiment, which is the 53rd North Carolina Regiment, Infantry Colonel William Owens, Commander. We are enlisted for three years, or the war. We fell in line and marched to our camp, which is on Dunn's Hill, just outside of the city. June 22nd, nothing new. June 23rd, moved our camp two miles up the road towards Richmond. It is a very bad camp, low ground and muddy. But there is a factory here and plenty of girls to make up for the damp ground. June 24th, we had a drill today and went to town to see some friends. June 25th, reported fighting near Richmond. June 26th, we received marching orders this morning. The long roll beat at one in the night. We marched four miles on to Richmond, where we met some wounded of our army that had been injured at the Point of Rocks. We got to this place after marching all night, too late for the Yanks. They had gone. We stayed here until the 28th, then marched to Drury's Bluff, 20 miles from Petersburg. June 29th, arrived at Drury's Bluff this morning. Here we met our brigade, commanded by General Daniels. This brigade has five regiments, all North Carolina troops, composed of the 43rd, 53rd, 32nd, 45th, and 2nd North Carolina battalions. When we got to our brigade, we were left at Drury's Bluff, and the brigade marched on to Richmond, and we stayed here until the 30th. June 30th, heard firing at Richmond. We are eight miles from there, and in reserve. July 1st, there is nothing new. Only we can see the lines of battle over the river. They are still fighting around Richmond. July 4th. This is the day the Yankee General McClellan promised to eat dinner in our capital. He did not, but numbers of his command did, that is, in our prisons, but they did not get any turkey. July 6th. We got orders to march this morning. Left here with two days' rations of cornmeal and bacon in our haversacks. We got to Petersburg in the evening, 15 miles after a hard march. It is very warm, and we did not rest on the way, as it was a forced march. We camped at Dunn's Hill. July 7th, we returned to our factory girls again. All okay, you bet. July 27th, had a few friends visit us from home, and moved camp twice. Tonight we were ordered to fall in line, went to Petersburg, and there took the cars for Weldon. On the road a dreadful accident occurred. On the flat car that we were on, a captain of the Navy with us had his leg cut off by a sheet of iron flying off the flat. Lieutenant McMatthews, Henry Wertheim, and myself were knocked down, but not badly hurt. The captain died two days later. July 31st. Up to this time there is nothing new. We are camped at Weldon. August 1st. From date to the 4th, nothing. We have a good camp. August 5th. We received marching orders today. We embarked on the train at Weldon, went down the seaboard road a distance of 25 miles, and marched from there to Roberts Chapel. Our company and Company D were the only ones that went. We got there at 10 o'clock at night and laid in the woods until morning. August 6th, we fell in line and returned. We marched to Boykins and took the cars to our regiment again. This expedition was to capture Yankees that are stealing Negroes. When we got there, they had left. Up to August 19th, nothing new. We have a very good time here by ourselves. Got plenty to eat from the ladies and visit them whenever we can out of camp. August 20th, left here at 6 p.m. and arrived at Petersburg at three o'clock in the morning. Took the same bed that I had the last time, the sidewalk and the wall for my pillow. Cats, Hugh Sample, Bat Harry, Lieutenant Belk and some others were left behind, sick. August 21st, left at 4 a.m. and arrived in Richmond at 6 p.m., marched to Camp Lee two miles from the city, and put up any tent we could get a hold of, as it was raining very hard and too dark to see. We are all okay now. 
August 22nd, Sam Oppenheim of the 44th North Carolina Regiment, an old comrade of the 1st North Carolina Regiment, came to see me. He is stationed on the other side of the city. August 23rd, went uptown to see my brother Morris of the 44th Georgia Regiment, but his regiment had already gone to Gordonsville, so I returned to camp. August 26th, up to date, did not get half enough to eat. August 27th, three of our companies got Enfield rifles today. August 28th, ordered to Drury's Bluff. We left Richmond at 8 p.m. and got there at 2 a.m. We are camping on the old oat patch near our former camp. August 29th, Lieutenant Belk, whom we left at Weldon, sick, returned to us today. August 30th, our company went to work today throwing up breastworks. August 31st, still digging dirt. September 1st, Wardheim and myself went to Halfway Station to get a box that was sent to us from home, but it did not come. September 9th, up to today nothing new. Our regiment was paid off today. We receiving one month's wages, $11 for a private, which I have the honor to be. September 18th, nothing new. Only plenty of bad weather and hard work. We received marching orders at 9 a.m. We arrived in Petersburg at 5 p.m. Saw several friends there. Left Petersburg at 8 o'clock that night in cars for Wakefield. Arrived there at 11 a.m. September 19th. Left Wakefield at 9 p.m. and marched 20 miles. Laid in the woods without shelter and it raining very hard. Therefore did not need to wash myself in the morning. September 20th. Resumed our march at 6 o'clock this morning. Arrived at Black's Church after three hours march. Then turned about and tramped nine miles and camped for the night at Joyner's Church. September 21st. Left here at 6 p.m. Marched nine miles and halted for dinner. Our company being rear guard of the brigade, we had a hard time of it, as the roads are very muddy and we had to keep up all the stragglers. We reached Wakefield at 5 a.m. and laid in the woods and mud for the night. September 22nd. We laid here all day. Cars came for us from Petersburg tonight and took us back. Got there at 12 at night. Marched one mile and camped for the night. September 23rd. Left here this morning at 10 o'clock and got to our old camp at 4 o'clock this evening. This expedition was to strengthen Longstreet's forces near Suffolk. We got there after he was relieved and the siege of Suffolk abandoned. September 27th. Up to today, nothing new. Only today is my new year, the Jewish new year. October. This month passed off with nothing new, except cats returned on the 7th, and Danu was discharged. We are still on our old camp. November 5th. There is nothing for me to write. Today, Warheim and myself went to Petersburg to get a box that was sent from home, and while there, we had a very good time. November 6th. We commenced to put up winter quarters today. It is very cold and sleeting. November 7th. It commenced to snow this morning at 6 o'clock and continued until 1 in the afternoon. It is 3 inches deep. We got some whiskey into camp, which tasted very good and made us forget the cold. The balance of this month passed off very quietly. We are hard at work on our winter huts. December 1st and 2nd. We moved into our winter quarters. They are very good and strong. There are 10 men in each hut. December 3rd, Katz and myself went to Petersburg today. We met with friends, and the consequence you can imagine. The headache we had next day was caused by too much whiskey. December 8th, my birthday today. I am a man 21 years old, but I must say that I have been doing a man's duty before I was 21, providing a soldier's duty as a man's. I spent today in bringing mud to our palace for a fireplace. December 13th. There was nothing to record up to the 13th, but today had division review from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. December 14th. Rumored that we will leave Virginia for North Carolina. December 15th. Sure enough, got orders to cook five days rations. We started at 2 a.m. and got to Petersburg at 8 o'clock that night. I ran the blockade and went uptown and stayed all night and had a very good time. December 16th. I returned this morning and was not missed. We left here with the cars at 8 a.m. and got to Weldon at 3 p.m. on the 17th. December 17th. Laid in an old field until 8 p.m. and suffered a great deal from cold. 
We left here on flat cars and rolled all night on them. We arrived at Goldsboro at 10 a.m. on the 18th. The ladies on the road, especially those at Wilson, were very kind to us. They gave us plenty to eat, which we were very much in need of. December 18th, we marched through town and lay all night in an open field without tents. It is certainly bitter cold. The only fires we can make were from the fence rails, as the woods were too far for us to get to. December 19th, we got away from the open field at 12 midnight and went two miles out of town and camped in the woods. We met the Bethel Regiment today. I met quite a number of old friends and comrades of my old company. We compared notes on soldiering. We came to the conclusion that at Yorktown we were playing soldier, but now there is no play in it. We are expecting a fight every hour. December 20th. Went uptown today on French leave, and when I returned was put on guard duty for going. December 21st. I went to the creek to wash my clothing and myself, and when I got back the water had frozen on my head, so that I was obliged to hold my head by the fire so as to thaw it out. Wartheim's eyes are so bad that he can hardly see. Sam Wilson broke his shoulder blade. December 25th. There is nothing new up to today. Christmas. We moved our camp a little piece. Eigenbrunn came to see us today from home and brought me a splendid cake from Miss Clara File. This is certainly a hard Christmas for us. Bitter cold, raining and snowing all the time, and we have no tents. The only shelter we have is a blanket spread over a few poles, and gather leaves and put them in that shelter for a bed. December 26th. I got vaccinated today by Captain Harvey White. It was raining very hard, and we are all as wet as dish rags. December 31st. All is quiet up to today, the last of the year. It is still very cold.